over the last few weeks, I've done a number of reviews on the fast off-the-shelf printers that have become quite popular right now. Models such as the K1 from Creality, the P1 and X1 from Bamboo Labs. These printers are all very good, but whilst they're fast, they don't allow you to print big. Today, though, we're going to take a look at a model that not only will print fast, but print big as well, and that is the Quiddy X Max 3. Now, that is a printer that will not only allow you to print things like this Benchy here, but also things like this Benchy here. This video is going to be a review of the X Max 3, having spent some time with it over the last month. I'm going to walk you through its features and capabilities, share with you my thoughts and results, having spent some time with it. Now, just to be clear, Quiddy did send me this printer over for free. However, they have not paid me to make this video. They've not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. The X Max 3 is a large clipper based Core XY 3D printer. It is capable of printing of up to 600 millimeters a second and 2000 millimeters a second accelerations. It has a large 6 mil aluminium heat bed with a flexible removable sheet capable of up to 120 degrees C with a maximum build volume of 325 by 325 by 315 millimeters. It has an all-new high-flow extruder capable of up to 35 millimeters a second and a maximum hot end temperature of 350 degrees C. There are two hot ends available as well, a copper alloy for PLA and normal filaments, as well as a hardened hot end for abrasive filaments. This is mounted to the gantry, which is made up of 10 mil hardened hollow steel rods, which are designed to last the lifetime of the printer, and these are driven by 10 mil belts. Stepper-wise, this is based on the TCM2209 drivers. There are two motors at the back for the main gantry, and then we have two drive screws as well as two rods on each side for the bed, offering additional stability. As you can see, the printer is fully enclosed, and it also has a few other additional touches that make it ideal for filaments such as ABS, because it has a built-in 300-watt chamber heater, which can heat up to a maximum of 65 degrees C. It has an auxiliary parts cooling fan, as well as a filterable cavity fan at the back. Now, the core of this printer is based on a Rockchip RK3328 64-bit ARM CPU, which runs at 1.5 gigahertz. The main board has 8 gigs of onboard EMMC memory, 1 gig of DDR3 RAM, built-in Wi-Fi, Ethernet, as well as USB connectivity. This is all controlled by its built-in 5-inch color touchscreen on the front, which has an 800 by 480 resolution. And this is what allows you to actually do all of the basic control and functionality of the printer. Externally, the printer is predominantly made of plastic. We have a clear plastic front door, clear plastic removable lid, plastic side panels, which is all molded as part of the outside. And then we have our plastic back panel, which has a built-in filament sensor, ethernet and power switch at the bottom, as well as having a pre-molded area, allowing you to directly mount the included dry box on the back of the printer. Now, as you can see, this is a large printer. It is going to take up some space on the bench, and I'll show you a bit of a comparison on this compared to the K1 and the P1 later from Bamboo Lab. However, it also comes in a very large box as well, and you do need to be aware of that because it is actually classed as a two-man lift. Inside the box, the printer is actually quite well packaged. It has plenty of space around the sides to ensure that the printer itself shouldn't get damaged, even if the box does get dented. Once you've got it out, you'll find all of the main accessories for the printer in the middle. The overall setup process is fairly straightforward. There's no major assembly to do here. You will, though, need to remove some cable ties and screws from the bed and the gantry that hold everything in place. And once you've done that, you can simply then follow the on-screen instructions that will walk you through removing them, removing the packaging under the bed, and then you can follow the main setup process. As part of this main setup process, the printer will do its input shaping, but it will also do a bed calibration as well. This printer does have a BL touch sensor, but it's also worth understanding that it isn't fully automated like the P1 or the X1 from Bamboo and the K1 from Creality with regards to its Z adjustment. You do get a little card in the box and you do need to manually adjust the Z height on this when you first get it. You do that by simply sliding in the included sheet between the hot end and the bed and adjusting the Z height on the screen until you get it about right. This is 
basically the way we used to do this in the past. It isn't as automated as I would personally like, however, it isn't particularly difficult to do. It is worth me mentioning that it isn't as easy to do as it is on some open printers on this because there isn't a lot of space for your hand. When the bed goes to the max height, there isn't a large gap between the top plastic here and that bed. And what you're trying to do is get your hand in between to be able to do the adjustments. That can cause your hand to scrape slightly on the top plastic. And if you're someone with large hands like me, it is just something to be aware of. Now, once you've got the Z in, you can get some good results. Here is a full bed print that I did. You can see at 0.2 millimeters. Overall, it's almost perfect. It was a little off in that corner there, but other than that, it just shows how good the printer is able to adapt to the bed. It is a large bed on this. Clipper does have that mesh level adjustment, and I can see the variance in this printer when I check. So it is good to see that it can compensate for that as well. And whilst it isn't absolutely perfect, this doesn't bring any concerns to light for me at all. Now, with regards to software, the XMAX is largely based off the open source community's work. What we have on the printer itself is the Clipper based main operating system. And then we have other pieces of open source software, such as the Slicer, which is based off Prusa Slicer. As it is based off Prusa Slicer, which again is based off Slice 3R, it has all of the usual functionality you would expect to find in it. We do, though, have our Devices tab, which gives us our main access into Fluid, which gives us our control over Clipper if you have got it connected on the Wi-Fi network. And it does have some nice controls, very similar to what we see on the Creality K1 series. So you have your slicing control, and then you have the ability to send this wirelessly to the printer if you want to. You can simply choose the printer from the list, send the G code to it, or you can simply go under the Device tab, control the printer, you have access to all your previously used files, you've got your console, your job list, your print status, as well as your history, and everything else such as your bed mesh leveling information as well. Now, controlling the printer via the touchscreen gives you all of the basic controls, but if you want to do more in-depth stuff, you are going to need to do it via either Fluid that I've got access to here in the slicing software or your direct access into Clipper. Whilst this printer is based on open source software, you can't just go and download Clipper and install it. It does have a proprietary main board, which means you are not going to be able to just install and go. You are going to need to rely on updates from Quiddy themselves. Now, before we take a look at some of the prints that I've done on this printer and the quality, I want to talk a bit about speed. This printer is as fast as the Creality K1, the Bamboo P1, and the Bamboo X1. All of these printers now are in this five, 600 millimeters a second capability, 2000 millimeters a second accelerations. This printer does have a high flow rate hot end up to 35 millimeters a second, and that does give it some advantages when we talk about large printing as well. Really, when it comes to speed, there's nothing magical here compared to the others. It is on par with the other printers. All of these printers are really fast now. And what we're looking for is what the quality is like compared to that speed. And what this printer has that the others don't have is build volume. And that's what we'll take a look at now on the prints. I've been doing testing with it on large prints like this giant Benchy, which we'll talk about in a minute. We've done the Mandalorian helmet. I've done a big carabiner, as well as some smaller test prints as well on Groku and all of the usual ones that I use to test a printer here in the workshop. Now, looking over some of the prints, we'll start with the smaller ones and then we'll move on to some bigger ones. Now, I'm not going to go into smaller benches and things like that. I have printed quite a few and I've had no issues at all. Here, I've just got a selection of prints in different materials that I just want to walk you through just to give you an idea of the kind of output you can get on the printer. Now, we're going to start with this rose. This is a test print that I do on pretty much all of the printers. So it's VAS mode. This allows me just to see overall how the printer behaves. Bottom layers come out really nice, although there is a small little bit of an area there in the middle where it hasn't quite squished in enough. I didn't quite get the Z adjustment right. But other than that, the print has come out really, really nice. 
Very little ringing actually on it compared to what I've seen on a couple of the other printers. And no errors, no zits, really nice and smooth. Zero complaints on this at all. We then have this rabbit. This is actually a test print from the printer. This is going to be quite hard to show you on camera because it's white PLA and the lights in here. I'll try and put some B-roll up to show you a little bit as well. This is in fast PLA. It's the Creality fast PLA. And overall, again, it's come out absolutely fine. Bottom layer looks good. The overhang there looks okay. A little bit rough, but nothing major. Again, same down there where the overhang is. There's no supports used on this print at all. And again, under the ears there a little bit. But I have to say, more than happy with the print. About the only thing on it is there's a small blemish here with what looks to be a bit of a burned filament, actually. It's a little bit dark. It's a little zit. It's a tiny one. But other than that, it's pretty much perfect. Now, printed in the same material was this Groku or Baby Yoda. Now, this is printed with supports. This one has actually come out better than the one I did on the K1. That one, the hand didn't come out at all down here. Same 0.2 millimeters. This finger did break as I was removing the supports, but the print actually went through fine. Again, the areas on this that are challenging is the areas down here under the ears. Overall, feels nice. Round here at the back where you do have some support. I use tree supports on this one rather than standard supports. And the quality is just really nice. Again, I'll put some B-roll up as I'm talking here just to make sure you can see what it looks like too. Then, I've done this test print. This is actually in ABS. This isn't in PLA. I wanted to do this as a temperature test, but also check it for warping as it printed as well. I actually used the heated chamber for this one, set at 60 degrees. And again, we do have some areas where you have seen a little bit of burning under there on the filament, but you can see the print test has come out good. The overhangs up to 70 degrees and up to 80 degrees are absolutely fine. The only area underneath you can see it's a little bit loose. It's not even loose, actually. It's just a little bit rough beyond 70 is what I would say. Just looking at that one there as well. Yeah, it's about the same. The bridging has come out absolutely fine. No complaints there at all. The, yes, they are missing. That's me. Nothing to do with the printer. That was me removing it off the bed. And again, I managed to catch it with my hand. Circles look nice and round. Better than I've seen on one of the other printers, actually. And then we've got the supports in there as well on that test. Overall, I'm actually really pleased with how that's come out. No complaints. The writing has printed as well. There, you can now see the writing is showing for the bridging test. I can show you the bridging. Holes look nice and uniform. Really very, very good. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the larger prints in front of me here that I've done on the X Max 3 as well. Before we do that, though, I just want to mention that scaling prints up to this size is not quite as straightforward as just making them larger. You can often run into issues on larger prints that you would never have seen on smaller ones. There are things that you need to take into account, such as warpage, shrinkage, as well as the way the print behaves when it cools. There are a lot of issues that can arise once you start to scale prints up to this level, and if you do buy a printer with a large print bed, don't get too disheartened if you start running into problems. It is absolutely a learning curve and things simply as the orientation of the print on the bed can make a massive difference as a result of the way the print cools. In the end, what it does take is a lot of practice and what I would say is if you're starting to print large models for the first time, take it slowly. Don't just run out and print something like this because it could fail. Start working your way up the size scales and understanding how you your filament behaves as you increase the scale of the print. Next, we have this carabiner. Now, I've printed this in ABS, although I did make a little bit of a mistake in the slicing on this. I didn't do enough outside layers. This is the official size that that STL comes, and I blew it up to this size here. That's in white PLA. Actually, no, I think that's in white ABS as well. That was done on the P1, I believe, that one. Uh, this was obviously done 
on the X Max 3. About the only mistake I made on this is I didn't do enough outside layers. It's a little bit translucent on this ABS. It's not as strong as it would be with, say, three or four outside layers like they actually recommend. But more than anything, it was a print just to demonstrate what you can do on this printer. Really, for a print of this size, there's no complaints. The outside surface is a little bit rough in places, but that is going to be down to the fact that I've enlarged the STL. It really isn't designed with the detail that, say, this model here has. But the writings come out really nice. Little bit of ghosting either side of the right in there. Again, it's printed in a colour that's going to be really hard for me to show you on camera. Again, I will try and put some B-roll up but I got no major complaints at all. And really it just shows that you can print some really large ABS items on this printer. It was done again with the chamber heater on, no warping, nothing at all. It's really good having that heater that just does keep everything in check when you are doing things like ABS. Next, moving over to a giant Benchy. Now this is the size of a normal one and this is the one that I printed. Now. This used nearly a kilo of filament. However, you can see it hasn't come out perfect. We have this line that runs along here. We've got lines running along here and up here. Now, I've spent some time doing some investigation on this, and we believe this is as a result of the filament I was using and not the printer. I used a brand new spool of black PLA on this print, but it was a no-name spool that I had laying around. It was a brand new sealed one. I didn't dry it before printing it. I just put it in and carried on. And we actually think we were either getting some heat creep or it was clogging as the print went on. You can see here, you can see here, and it's also done the same up here and along there as well. Now, I don't believe this has been caused by the printer based on subsequent prints. I haven't used that spool since. Pretty much nothing left on it, if I'm honest. As I said, it's nearly a kilo's worth of filament. Um, but I did send the file off to QDI to have a look at, and their opinion was that it's the filament, and I've had nothing else give me problems since other than this one, so I'm going to put it down to the filament as well. What it does show, though, is the overall quality that you can get from this printer on a large print. The tops come out absolutely fine. We've got the chimney there. We've then got the bow area, the inside there. Looks good, looks fine. It's not perfect, but this is a blown up Benchy as well. So there's going to be errors in the model as a result of doing one this large, but it does show you what you can do with this printer. I'm actually really pleased with how the bottom layers come out. The bridging over the letters has come out real nice. The bottom layer is really nice as well. I think this took about 19 hours to print. It was a long time, but it wasn't crazy considering its size. And again, it just shows the capacity that you do have on the build volume with this printer. Now, the final big print I want to show you is this. This is a Mandalorian helmet. Now, I did this on the X Max 3. I have to say, I am really pleased with how this has come out. If you look at it on this side here, you will notice that there's a crack. Now, that is not as a result of the printing. That is not as a result of any failures. That is as a result of my child dropping it on a hard floor whilst playing with it. So unfortunately, I've ended up having to super glue it, but that's nothing to do with the print itself. Now, walking you through the quality, you can see there the top layer where it's obviously come up and gone to there. I didn't set any variable layer height or anything on this. This was printed at 0.2 mil straight. So I just wanted to let it finish just to see how it came out. Looking at it at the side, that wasn't dropped. You can see this area up here has come out nice. We did have some supports all around there and all around the bottom as well. It's a little bit rough, but it's quite a hard print to do this one because when you're laying it on the bed, it doesn't sit flat. You have got to have supports all the way around there. And if we look inside, there was no supports added for the center at all. You can see in there that there is a little bit of a spider's web. It did fill but it is a little bit loose. That isn't a problem. That's something I could resolve with either adding supports on the print or just getting in there with a bit of a heat and that would melt that down. I'll zoom in just to show you that in a minute. 
But I have to say, I am really pleased with how this came out. If you were looking then to sand this and paint this up, it'd be absolutely no problem at all. About the only complaint is it isn't the strongest model in the world, as I can say there, because my child did drop it, but it was on a hard floor as well. But again, it's just to show you the available size of volume that you do have on this printer. Okay, now to share with you some opinions and thoughts on the Quiddy X Max 3, having spent some time with it over the last month. I actually really like this printer, but it isn't without fault. It does some things very, very well, but it is also frustrating in some ways in others. It is a printer that is based on the open source Clipper, but it isn't fully open source. You can't just go on the website and install whatever version you want. There is a bit of an interesting mix of software on this because you've got that main processor and then you've got that front display and you do have to update the firmware via the Quiddy website. That isn't to say you can't do things and modifications yourself but it is their own board on the back and as a result of that there are some quirks around what you're going to be able to do with this. The firmware update process on this printer is particularly clunky. It really isn't easy. You have to install it on a USB memory stick and install it on the printer and then allow that to take place. And it can be very, very slow. But then what's frustrating is you do that and then you need to recalibrate everything again. It's not that it's hard, but it just doesn't feel as polished as modern printers. This printer does have Wi-Fi, but it certainly isn't using that style of technology to be able to do updates like we see on the Creality or the Bamboo. Everything just feels a little bit more two, three years ago in that respect. That is also very much the case with the bed leveling as well. You have to do that manual Z adjustment. Not particularly difficult, but it's not the easiest thing in the world on this printer, especially with the lack of space at the front to get your hand in. And it relies on you having some experience on what sort of gap you want on the hot end down to the bed. It can take a bit of tweaking. Once you've done it a few times, it's no problem at all, but it just doesn't have that modern feel like we've got on some of the newer printers. Now, build quality wise, this printer is all made of plastic. It doesn't feel too cheap, but there are areas that do feel like they could have done better. For instance, the door, whilst it's good, it is plastic, just does move around a little bit. It feels a little cheap, but it isn't that it is. It's just the kind of material that it's made of. Also the same with the top lid, it is made of that Perspex as well. It isn't particularly well fitting. You have got to give it a bit of a bang to get it to go in. It doesn't just drop in place. It just feels like the plastic tolerances on this aren't quite as nice as they could be. And I'd even say that the Creality has a bit more of a better premium feel to it over this. Whereas compare this or the Creality to the Bamboo, they are definitely on another level. Whilst on the software, the display on this is good, but everything is quite basic. I do like the layout of the settings and everything, although there really isn't that much that you can do on this display. This printer really does rely on you having to do most of the stuff via the slicer or G code. You do have basic configuration on here, but you certainly don't have a depth of configuration like you may have on some other printers. The Wi-Fi connectivity works okay. It connects to the Quiddy app. You have the devices section. This setup is very similar to what Creality are doing on the K1 series. So you have the slicer, which again feels very much based off Prusa slicer. That then has a devices tab that allows you to do your adjustments in there for your printer. But what you don't have is that connectivity like you have on the Bamboo with the app. And whilst you don't have the webcam as standard, you can install one. You just don't have all of those extra bells and whistles that you get on the likes of the Bamboo. What I would say is the Bamboo is at the top end of giving you control and options. The Creality is a nice balance, not forcing you down some roads with regards to the online Online connectivity. This does feel a lot more basic. Whilst you can wirelessly send prints to it via the slicer, you just don't have that control via the app. And I think it's something that we could see Quiddy develop more with in the future. 
With regards to print quality and speed, I have no complaints on this printer. It's fast, the quality is good even on small prints, but it gives you that massive build volume as well, which is really good to see. I can literally say nothing bad about the output of this printer at all. Whilst I have had a few issues, especially with that large benchy, that more than anything I believe was down to the filament, not the printer itself. And everything I've done since then has been absolutely spot on. So it certainly isn't compromising quality for size in everything that I've seen so far. Overall, the Quiddy X Max 3 is a decent printer. For me, it's a bit of a mix of old and new. It is open source, but it isn't fully open source in the sense of you can just crack on and do what you want. It is using their customized mainboard, but it is running Clipper. It doesn't have some of the bells and whistles we have on modern printers. No AI, no LiDAR, no full auto calibration, but what it does have is good print quality and volume, and that is something that you won't get on the Bamboo or the standard K1 at this time. Overall, I think Quiddy have done a good job. It isn't perfect, and I do think there are some areas for improvements with regards to the noise on the fan inside at the back on the CPU, as well as a few of the other build quality feel things. However, it isn't bad, and I think you're going to be able to get some good results from this, especially if you're looking for a large format printer. Now, price-wise, the X Max 3 is available for £939 in the UK and $949 US. For that, you're getting a large format Core XY printer based on Clipper that has some really nice additional features like the built-in cavity heater that's going to allow you and help you to get the very best results from your larger prints. Now, I'm really interested in knowing what you think about this printer. If you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to it in the description. As I said at the start, Quiddy did send me this one over. I want to say a big thank you from me to them for doing that. And if you've liked this printer and want to get one, there will be a link below for you to use. I'm really also interested in hearing your thoughts on this printer. If you have any comments or questions, put them down below and I will try and answer them as well. Finally, I want to say if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, there are links in the description to some of my other reviews. We have links of the Creality K1, we have links of the Bamboo series, and there's also a link there to my Patreon as well. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons for the support they've given, and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Please do let me know what you think in the comment section. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.